Hey everybody, thank you for joining us on this platform for Be The Church. We are in the middle of a series called Be Blank. And I just wanted to offer you some encouragement today on be courageous and living a courageous life. When I think about living courageously, the first person that pops into my mind from the Bible is David. And as you may know, David was a shepherd. And while he was shepherding his sheep, David had the opportunity to kill a bear and a lion with his bare hands. Um, I think even more he was known for killing Goliath, a real live giant that he killed with one smooth stone. And he was able to do that because God paved the way for David to kill Goliath. And I think about today and the world that we live in in such trying and uncertain times and, you know, lots of different transitions going on, uh, the loss of a job, the loss of loved ones, um, maybe difficult transitions in families and homes, and maybe you are actually going through something like that today than now. And I just cannot think of a better time for the men and women of Christ to rise up and live courageously. You know, David was able to take on Goliath without armor and without big, heavy um, killing equipment because he had God on his side. So he was able to pick up five smooth stones and it took one of those stones in his slingshot and he was able to take down that giant that everyone was so afraid of, but God led the way. So when I think about people in my life that I feel like have led by example of living a courageous life, I think about my sister, Crystal, so we grew up in a family of ministry, full-time ministry, our whole lives serving and um, serving all the time in our local church, as well as across the state in several other churches. And my sister was always serving, always giving. In her adult years, she was coaching and leading different youth groups and different groups in the community. And she always just lived courageously. So my sister, came up against the biggest giant in her life, which was cancer. So when she was diagnosed with cancer, she just continued to live courageously. I remember having talks with my mom and my sister and my dad about, man, do you think she's scared? Because I know I was scared and she just didn't act scared at all. And I would say to them, do you think that she's scared? I'm concerned because she's not showing us that she's afraid. And so I would have conversations with her and I would say, hey, I know this is really a scary time and I just want to be there to support you however I can. Um, I'm afraid and it's okay for you to be afraid. And I remember very vividly her just saying to me, I'm not afraid. I know where I'm going to end up and I know that God has perfect plan for me. In my sister's last days, we spent a lot of time at hospitals and then we were fortunate enough to actually spend several weeks at home with her on hospice. I remember um, at one of the hospitals that we were at, uh, they have chaplains that come in and they would talk to her and then they would come out and speak to us, the family. And I remember one of them specifically pulling my dad aside and saying, you know, I see people like Crystal every day, and I am prepared to walk into that room and offer them encouragement and to be able to build them up and to pray with them. But he said, you have nothing to worry about with her. She is at such peace and she has such courage that God is doing a work in her life and that he is completing that. He said, I walked in there expecting to uplift her and I walked out being uplifted and changed. And so that is just uh, the interaction that she had with people, even throughout her sickness and in her last days. So as I was thinking about this, I reached out to a family friend of ours who had the opportunity to actually be our pastor for a time and then was also a hospice chaplain um, that came in and spoke with my sister. And he took some time to write me a letter. And I just wanted to share that with you real quick. 
As a pastor and a hospice chaplain, I have met some incredibly strong people, he says. I'm not talking of individuals that perform feats of physical strength or have bulging muscles, but those who live out their faith in the midst of overwhelming adversity. Those who have a solid, strong faith that when life, even when life seems unfair, those who choose to trust the heart of God even when they can't trace his hand. Crystal was one of those people. One of the strongest people, if not the strongest person I have ever met. Crystal was a wonderfully talented young woman who left a positive imprint on everyone who was blessed to cross her path. As her pastor, I was blessed to hear her sing along with her talented sisters on several occasions at our church. Crystal was diagnosed with cancer, and after surgery and treatment, we prayed for healing and thought that would be the outcome, but her cancer was relentless. I witnessed Crystal face that cruel disease with grace and a strength that is not of this world. It was supernatural grace that Crystal displayed. During her treatments, Crystal continued to come to church and help lead and worship on the praise team. On one Sunday morning, she was in tremendous pain, yet she led the congregation in worship, then went and laid down her, in her car and came back and helped sing during the altar call. That is strength. I remember going over to her home late at night and having prayer with her and her family before she passed. At the end of the prayer, she guess, she says, I guess the Lord's not ready for me yet. She sent everyone out of the room with help from her cousins, ordered a canvas picture with her and members of her family when she was young. We were not aware of what she was up to. Not long after that was, not long after that task was complete, Crystal's faith became sight and received, she received her ultimate healing. I remember after her funeral, our church was providing food for the family at their home and to everyone's surprise, waiting for the family when returning from her funeral were those beautiful canvas pictures that Crystal had ordered of her family. I'm convinced the only way they could have gotten that quick, gotten there that quick, was the grace of God. Cancer was no match for Crystal Phelps. It could not touch her faith or her sweet spirit and her thoughtfulness. Crystal had supernatural strength because she was deeply rooted in faith in a supernatural God. She had courage. She displayed courage. I just want to leave you with a little um, bit of a song that my sisters and I used to sing when we were younger. And it just goes like this. Be strong and take courage. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. For the Lord goes before you, and His light will show you the way. So I want to encourage you today to step up, to live courageously, to live like David, and to live like Crystal. Be blessed and be courageous.